All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our first webinar for Give 828 in 2021. Uh, my name is Linda. This is our Getting Started webinar, so kind of our Getting to Know You webinar. Um, we're going to talk about um, the platform, the event, and we're really just going to onboard you to the Give 828 event. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhart. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Uh, Mighty Cause has been the platform partner for Give 828 for a few years now, um, and so I will be taking the platform-centric part of the presentation. Um, and I thought we could just go around and introduce ourselves and how we're involved in Give 828 since I have some co-hosts here with me today. So I guess we'll start with Nema. Hi, Nema. Hi, Linda. Can and you're... Yeah, what's your title at the YBGB Institute? Yeah, so my name is Nema and I'm the program assistant at YBGB. Um, my job is to offer administrative and programmatic support primarily for the YGBG Giving Fund, but also for Give 828. Perfect, thank you. And Courtney, this is like my first time speaking with you, I think. So um, if you could just give us a quick introduction an introduction uh, to who you are and how you came to be involved with Give 828. Sure, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Courtney McSwain. I am a communications consultant. Um, and so I have been involved with the Young Black and Giving Back Institute for several years and been involved with Give 828 um since its inception so i'm really excited to be here uh, my role is uh simply to support communications um email marketing and storytelling for the organization and for give 828 so excited to hear all the stories that you all will be telling about the amazing fundraising that you're going to do with us this year Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so today um, it's gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna have an introduction from Nema and from Courtney. They're gonna go through a few slides. Um, then we're gonna do some giving day basics, um, just zooming back and explaining what a giving day is, what it's all about. And then we're gonna launch into the platform centric training just so that you have all of the tools that you need to get ready for Give 828 in August. Um, and we are gonna be doing a live Q and A at the end. So if you think of anything that you'd like to ask, well either myself, Courtney, or Nema are speaking, just go ahead and type that into the Q&A box and we'll make sure to make time for it at the end of the presentation. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to uh, Courtney and Nema. All right. So the Young Black and Giving Back Institute was founded in 2014 by Ebony Johnson Cooper. Um, the YBGB's mission is to serve young Black leaders with a mission to educate, inspire, and empower them to effectively invest in changing their communities through civic engagement and philanthropy. Our signature programs include capacity building trainings and convenings on topics that include board governance, fundraising, policy and advocacy, and social entrepreneurship. And so far, we've helped to equip more than 300 civic leaders across the nation um, through our social media platforms, we've also amassed a following of over 10,000 social entrepreneurs, nonprofit professionals, and nonprofit organizations. I'll talk about Give 828 uh, next. So Give828 is a giving day dedicated to grassroots Black organizations. Um, it marks the conclusion of the Black Philanthropy Month, a celebration of African descendant giving held annually in August. So Give 828 shares in the mission of promoting philanthropy within the Black community. And spe Give 828 specifically builds on the momentum created throughout the, the giving month with one concentrated day of giving that leverages the online, online fundraising tools to tap into the enthusiasm of the Black millennium and Gen Z donor. And you can go on our website to find out more about why we chose the date August 28th specifically. This year will be our fourth year of Give 828. And in the last th uh, three years, in the past three years, we've, um, we've had some success. The first year we've had, we had 114 organizations um, register and they were able to raise $12,700. In the second year, uh, uh, 2019, we had 140 organizations um, registered and they raised 34,000. And the last year was our most successful year so far. Um, Give 828 raised more than $250,000 for 400 and 
70 black led black benefiting organizations from 2,291 donors. So um, every year we try to get um, sponsors and partners to join us in this day. Um, and we're excited to have a, a wonderful uh, a mass, a, a wonderful group of sponsors. Obviously Mighty Cause is our fundraising partner. Um, LN and Co is our digital marketing partner. Uh, they're working with us on social media and digital marketing. CNRG Accounting is a really great accounting firm. They specialize in nonprofit accounting. So if you are looking for an accountant or you're looking for some services in accounting, um, definitely check them out because they specialize in nonprofit accounting, which uh, I'm sure everyone knows is a little bit different than other forms of accounting. So the, they're definitely experts in that area. Um, the Do Good Institute at the University of Maryland School of Public Policy, they specialize in philanthropy um, and training. So we're super excited to have them as a partner. And then the Central Carolina Community Foundation um, has been a partner with us for several years. So excited to have them back as well. Um, and if, if you know of any organizations that would like to join us as a sponsor and partner, um, we'd love to still have you. So <laughs> feel free to uh, reach out to us and let us know if you'd like to become a partner. So our goals for this year, um, as Nima uh, said, we had about 500 registered nonprofits. And so we want to double that this year and try to make it to 1,000 and a collective $500,000 raised. And uh, one of the things that you may hear folks ask, I'm not sure if everyone here is registered, but one of the questions you may have or some of your friends in the nonprofit world may have is why should I register for this? Um, and really registration comes with some benefits. So you have a centralized platform on the Mighty, Co on the Mighty Cause platform and they really allow you to have um, a page. They kind of take all of the, the guesswork and the hard work out of it and really give you an opportunity to create a really good looking streamlined sleek fundraising page. And so especially if you're new to fundraising and doing this kind of digital fundraising, it's really great to have something that's kind of ready for you and not too difficult to put together, um, allows you to tell your story of your organization all in one centralized place. And you can also, you know, have people who aren't familiar with you find you right there on our Give 828 uh, page that is run by Mighty Cause. So that's a great benefit of registration. There's also a monetary prizes and incentives that go on throughout the day. One of the exciting things about Give 828 is throughout the day, we have a leaderboards. And so there are incentives to do, you know, to, to continue to fundraise throughout the day. Um, we run contests and prizes throughout the day. There are themed contests. So some of our partners and sponsors will um, sponsor prizes for specific types of organizations that may be working in healthcare or maybe working with mentoring or, or whatever the specific category is that they're interested in. So that's a great incentive um, and benefit of registering. Only registered nonprofits kind of get into the pool for those prizes and incentives. And then things like this, the webinars and the toolkits, the resources that we have available for you. Um, you know, giving days, I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit later with the strategy, but it's one of those things where it works if you work it. And so we really try to help um, the organizations who are registered really work the process, really get into your strategy, really help you um, figure out how your campaign is going to look and then offer you support, you know, our registered nonprofits can reach out to us and ask us questions. And so we're really here to be a support system for you. So those are kind of the things that you can expect and some of the benefits of registering uh, on the Mighty Cause website. Sorry about that, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, so thank you for that. I'm gonna go into some of the basics of giving days. Uh, Mighty Cause does quite a few giving days. So I just wanted to onboard you to the concept of giving days. We do have a longer um, onboarding video that goes into the concept of what a giving day is and how to participate on the Give 828 website. So you can check that out if you wanna dive more into the basics of giving days, but we're just gonna start there. 
So what a giving day is and how they work um, is really central to participating successfully in a giving event like Give 828. Um, really the point of having a giving event is to inspire some friendly competition. Um, you're rallying around a cause, which in the case of Give 828 is black, black led and black benefiting nonprofits. Um, but you're also there to compete for prizes as Courtney was mentioning earlier. Um, we have a couple of different kinds of prizes. Um, those will be announced pretty soon. Um, but we have leaderboards, which represent your cumulative fundraising efforts since the beginning of the event and golden tickets, which are hourly prizes that are awarded throughout the day. Some of those are competitive and some of those are not. Um, really, the goal is to spread awareness of your mission and your work. So as Courtney was mentioning, talking about your organization, the work you do in the world and in your community, um, and really rallying around uh, the cause of your nonprofit and like nonprofits, um, and working collectively to raise money for Give 828, um, using the day to really bolster your cause, bolster your fundraising, and connect with your donors and also bring in some new donors. Um, and one of the great things about Give 828 is that it's also a really fantastic opportunity to engage sponsors in your nonprofit. Um, so if you haven't had any sponsorship activity with your nonprofit in the past, this is a really great icebreaker. We're going to talk a lot more about that in the second Give 828 webinar. Um, but you can also engage your community partners. You can band together with uh, allies in your community to help boost your fundraising campaign. And you can also involve your supporters with peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. So there's a lot of opportunities to get your community really involved um, as you raise money for the event. Um, in terms of what your nonprofit's responsibility responsibilities are when you register for the event. A, you do need to register. You can participate off the platform, but unfortunately that takes you out of the running for a lot of, for all of the prizes. So it's really in your best interest to register to participate. Um, you'll need to create and customize a profile on Mighty Cause. If you have participated in Mighty Cause in the past, you do, need, do not need to worry about that. You'll just need to update your page. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to do that in a bit. Um, you'll need to plan a fundraising campaign. So what are you going to do and how are you going to raise money um, and then you'll just need to promote your campaign using whatever channels you normally use to communicate with your supporters so social media email having live events if that's safe for you to do where you are right now um, and then inviting supporters to participate in peer-to-peer -peer. Um, that's not a requirement but it is helpful for your organization it gets more boots on the ground and gets more people involved in the day and it expands your reach on the day and then you just need to raise money it's really very simple Simple to participate and Mighty Cause makes it as easy as possible. Um, again, if you wanted to talk a little bit more about what giving events are and what Give 828 is, we do have a, a video that's solely dedicated to that um, on the Give 828 website. And now we're going to dive into the things that are a little bit dry. So I apologize in advance. This is really more focused on the Mighty Cause platform and how to navigate it and get started. Um, so when you are registered for the event and you get access to your page, um, your dashboard is really going to be the main hub on Mighty Cause. That's what you'll navigate to edit your page, to check your reports, and so on and so forth. Um, so on your dashboard, you have an overview page, which is really handy if you want to especially measure your um, your fundraising against last year. We have a lot of really cool data that you can use on your overview screen. You can customize that as well. So for instance, if you're looking at donor retention, um, because you've participated in 2020, you can get your donor retention rate on your overview screen. And you can also quickly pull some metrics um, if you want to see how you're doing versus last year. So your overview screen is extremely helpful. Um, and this is also where you'll find your to-do list, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. Um, under fundraising, uh, you'll find your profile, um, you'll find your campaign screen, which is where you can see any pages that were set up on behalf of your organization. Um, if you did a standalone page last year for Give 828, you can access it there. And you can also see any peer-to-peer -peer campaigns that are coming in. Um, you can customize your checkout flow, which is really handy. Um, you actually have quite a bit of control over what the donation process looks like for your donors. So you can access all of those things under fundraising. That's basically where all 
all of your fundraising tools are going to be located on Mighty Cause. Um, we also provide robust reporting for your nonprofit. Um, so everything that you might need, whether it's a donation report, which is in real time. So as people make donations, they will appear there. Uh, your donor retention report, which is really handy if you participated in the past. You can pull a list of people who gave last year but haven't given this year, and you can do some targeted outreach to those individuals. Um, and you can also find your disbursement settings. So as you're actually starting to get the money deposited into your bank account at your organization, you can find the disbursement report that breaks down exactly what is included under reporting. Um, and then settings is really just your basic housekeeping um, stuff. So you can add administrators. If you have somebody else who needs access to your page, you can add them there. You can have 10. Um, you can manage your organization's legal information. So just for instance, if you've uh, changed your name, since you were last on Mighty Cause. Um, if you have a new address, you can update that information there. And you can also set up EFT so that you can get your disbursements directly in your nonprofit's bank account. Um, so basically anything that's related to housekeeping on Mighty Cause is generally under settings. Um, as I was mentioning, you'll just need to customize your profile. If you're starting out fresh this year, you don't really need to worry uh, too much about that because you have last year's work saved for you. That's an evergreen page, so you just need to update it. Um, but if you're new to Give828 this year, you'll have a little bit of customization to do to customize your, your profile so that when people come to your page, they can see that you've shown it some love and they can learn a little bit more about your nonprofit. Um, so you'll want to customize the look and feel, tell your story, um, and then complete your to-do list. Um, basically, the to-do list is five items, and those five items uh, will basically lead to your page being complete. They're not required, but they're definitely recommended items uh, that you complete before the giving event. Um, so your theme is basically the look of your page. We have an example here. Um, you basically just want to upload a banner, which is an image that is really in the background of your, your organization page that represents your work. We do also have a gallery of stock images if you'd like to use one of those. Um, you can actually choose a filter um, if you wanted to add a wash to your, your banner image. You can set the theme color for your page so you have control over the color of the buttons. So if you wanted to make that match your organization's logo, you actually have a lot of control over the way your page looks um, within the uh, theme of your page. So that's one area that you want to pay some attention to, show it some love, make it match your brand and make it look like your organization. Your story is really your opportunity on your page to talk about who you are, what you do in the world, why you do what you do, and draw donors in with your story. Um, so it's really a, an inline text editor. If you can use Google Docs or Microsoft Word, you can definitely use this. You can add formatting like headers, lists, and so on. You can embed a video. You can embed images. Um, a lot of um, organizations get really creative with this area. They'll create charts and, charts and infographics. So there's really a lot of interesting, cool things that you can do. You can also add um, you know, hyperlinks, buttons. There's a lot you can add here. Um, and you can also add a custom tab. So if there's any information that doesn't quite fit in your story but you want to make available on your page, you have the flexibility to add that information through a custom tab. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to tell your story. Um, and we really recommend spending some time and showing this area some love, um, because the longer you can keep somebody engaged on your page, whether that's through looking at images or watching a video or reading through your story and some bullet points about your organization, the more likely they're going to be to make a donation. So if you make this, this story engaging and make your page dynamic and interesting to look at, um, you're going to draw draw donors in and make them more likely to give. You can also add some media and integrate your social media. So um, definitely, as I was mentioning, you want to make your page look interesting and dynamic. So you can add images from your Facebook page, your Instagram, and also your hard drive. Um, so for Instagram and Facebook, those will actually automatically import your images from those social media platforms. So if you're active on Instagram, definitely link it to your um, Mighty Cause page. So every time you update Instagram, you're also updating your Mighty Cause page. We don't use that data for anything, but it'll just make sure that your page is updated along with your social media accounts. Um, you can import images from Dropbox, Google Drive, or you can just upload them from your uh, hard drive. Um, and again, connect your Instagram account, connect your Facebook account if you're updating in those areas, um, because it adds vibrancy to your profile. It makes it look interesting. And the more you can do to draw donors in with the visual story of your organization, 
organization, the more likely they are to feel like they know your organization and support you with a donation. Um, so on the more dry side, uh, you do have reports for donations and disbursements. Um, so on Mighty Cause, when you're using our platform, um, everybody who is an admin for your organization will receive an email notification each time a donation is made. Um, so one thing that can be really helpful, especially if you're getting a lot of donations on a big day like Give 828, is to have uh, you know somebody have a dedicated account for that, and, or maybe send it to a folder because you may be getting a lot of those. But every time somebody makes a donation, um, you will get an email notification if you are an admin. Um, you can also access your donor data in real time. Um, this page updates as people make donations. Um, what you'll see there is a limited view. Um, you do have some filters so you can get zero on in on a particular date, donation type, or page that people are using to donate through. Um, but you can also download a CSV that has a lot more information about that donor and their transaction. Um, so if you're like, I don't know where this information is or I set up uh, dedications for this um, this for our so that the donors could tell us if they want to dedicate their donation. I don't see that on here. Download the CSV. It says download this page. That gives you basically all of the information that we have about your donors. Your donor donor data belongs to you, and you have full unfettered access to it. Um, we do also have a disbursement report. If you would like to set up EFT, that is highly recommended because it's quicker and more efficient. Um, and those are deposited twice per month on the 10th and the 25th. Um, checks are only sent out on the 10th of the month. So we basically bundle your disbursements together for you and we send them to your bank account so that your ac accounting is a lot easier. You don't have to track so, like a million different deposits. You get them all bundled together and you get this nice handy report that you can look at that tells you exactly what was included. Um, and you can access your disbursement details just to reconcile your books more easily. So we make it as easy as possible for you to understand what donations are coming into you, where they came from, and make sure that everything that you need is right here at your fingertips in your dashboard. Um, you can add offline gifts. Um, these do not count for prizes, so I just want to clarify that immediately. But if you do have donors who are just really um, dedicated to sending you checks, or you have donors who want to Venmo you money or send you money via PayPal, um, they can make a donation via PayPal on Mighty Cause. But for whatever reason, if you have an offline donation or one that's made through another platform, you can actually add that as an offline donation to reflect the totality of your fundraising activity for Give 828. <clears throat> so while they can't count towards your leaderboard totals and they won't count toward prizes, you can opt to have those count toward the totals on your organization page so that you can get a full picture of the amount of fundraising that you did. Um, so you can add an offline donation really easily under your, um, your the reports section of your dashboard. You just click add an offline donation and you can start the process there. You tell us a little bit about it. We don't verify these. So it's basically on the honor system and it's just displaying the full amount of your fundraising on Give828. And I just want to make it totally clear, they don't count toward prizes, but you can certainly add them. If somebody makes a gift in the wrong place or they just insist on sending you a check, you can add those so that everything is reflected in your Give828 total. As I was mentioning before, you do actually have quite a bit of control over your checkout flow, meaning the process that your donor goes through when they make a donation. Um, and this is really handy because you can choose what data you want to collect. If collecting addresses is really important for you, you can make sure to collect that during the checkout flow. Um, same for phone numbers, you can add some custom questions there as well. And you can also preview it, um, which is really handy because sometimes when we're just uh, ticking boxes and adding things, the donation process can get really cumbersome, but this gives you the ability to preview it from start to finish so that you can see exactly what your donors are going through when they're trying to make a donation. Um, and you can also use custom donation suggestions, which are really helpful fundraising tools. So um, by default, the platform is going to prompt people to give in increments of $25. So $25, $50, $75, and $100 are the suggested amounts that we present, but you can customize that. So for instance, if it's your, you know, the 
the number th 30 is really important to your, your campaign and your organization. Maybe it's your 30th anniversary of operation and you really want to go in increments of 30, you can do that. And you can also distill these amounts into real world items. So for instance, um, if $25 helps you uh, do a particular thing, like if you are a food pantry, this helps you feed a family of four uh, or something along those lines, you can use those custom donation suggestions to reinforce the work that you do and the impact that you have on your community. So these are really handy things that you have in your checkout flow. Um, another thing that I really want to make sure that you all um, realize is there because it's a little bit hidden is your thank you page. So through your thank you page, you can add a custom message from your organization. Um, you have a lot of control with the thank you page. So if you have a video or an image that you want to add, you can do that. It's the same inline text editor as your story. Um, and you can also add a receipt message. So on Mighty Cause, all of the donations go through the Mighty Cause Charitable Foundation and we issue the receipt and the donor advises their donation to your organization. And that allows us to handle the receipting for you. But you can add a custom message there just so that you can automate the thank you process and give yourself a little bit of time to actually thank those donors as your organization. But they get a quick automated message from you thanking them for their donation, which buys you a little bit of time time. Um, studies do show that thanking your donors within 24, I think 40, 48 hours after making their donation is really um, instrumental to getting them to come back. Um, so that automates that process for you so that you can follow up at a later time. Um, matching grants are something that uh, is a little bit of a complicated fundraising technique, but it's really exciting and it's a great way to get sponsors involved. And it is a surefire way to get more donations flowing on Give 828. So we have a lot of different types of matching grants that you can add. Um, you can do a one for one match, uh, which is basically like a BOGO sale on donations. Um, when somebody gives $25, uh, you have this big grant that's from a uh, one of your donors or a grantor or a sponsor, um, and then that donation is matched. So a $25 donation is actually 50 um, and so on. And there's a threshold donation. So it kicks in after a certain amount is raised. There's a lot of different options there. Um, but a matching grant is basically a large donation that your organization secures prior to the giving event. Um, and when I say large, it can be as little as 200 to 300 dollars depending on what you're trying to do with it and some organizations have very large matching grants because they have good sponsor relationships so it doesn't need to be enormous um, but basically enough that donors feel like they're able to get something out of it um, and you offer up that match you say okay well we have this sponsor who's generously providing $500 for donations made between this hour and this hour. And you can set that up through our platform so that you do not need to do the math. Um, we do the math for you. And the other great thing is that the match does not need to be paid through the platform. Certainly, if it is a large donation, it helps you on the leaderboard if that donation is made through the platform. But if you have a large donor who prefers to pay by check, that's absolutely fine. You can still add the matching grant um, and you can count it in your total. So if it's an offline donation, they don't count toward your, um, your leaderboard totals or toward prizes, but you can include that match so that people get a full picture of all of your fundraising on Give 828. Um, so if you have a relationship with a sponsor or a major gift donor or uh, somebody that's a partner in your community, approaching them to provide a matching grant is a really great way to get them involved in Give 828 um, and get donors interested because everybody loves a good deal. And when you're able to get more for your money and make your, your money go a little bit further for the nonprofit, most people love that. And it's a really great way to generate interest for the giving event. So the matching grants tool is something that I highly suggest taking a look at. We're going to talk a little bit more about matching grants in our next webinar. Um, but just as an intro to the topic, a matching grant is just a larger donation that you leverage to incentivize other people to give during a certain period of time. So you can schedule it doing, using the matching grants tool, and you can also take a look at the options there because there's a lot of flexibility with this tool. So they don't all have to be one-to-one -one matching grants. You can be really creative with how you utilize that match depending on your goals. Um, so settings, again, is not particularly exciting. It's basically all of the, the housekeeping for your organization profile. You can add or remove admins. Um, 
organizations that have participated before, I highly recommend at the beginning of each year, once you're getting ready to participate in the event again, just take a look at who has admin access. If there's a volunteer or a staff member who's no longer with you, um, you can go ahead and remove them and you can add anybody who might need access to your page. Um, you can update your legal address if that has changed, your legal name if that has changed, um, and just check on your EFT um, status and make sure that that's connected to the correct account um, because we definitely want to make sure that the money is going to the, the right place. Um, so check in on that and make sure that that's all well and good before you get going this year. Um, and you can also customize some sharing, um, social sharing information, your images, and you can um, change the URL of your page. So there's quite a bit of stuff that you can do through your settings. So basically this is where you'll find any sort of housekeeping type stuff that you need for your profile that doesn't fit into either fundraising tools or reports. Um, you do have a widget that you can use um, through Mighty Cause. It's really helpful if you prefer to fundraise on your website. Um, if you have your own organization's website and you want to make use of the uh, donation widget, it is um, fully integrated with Mighty Cause. So it's an iframe embed and you can just embed it on your site wherever you would like. Um, and it's totally secure within um, the iframe. So even if your site itself is not secure, um, which it should be, but if it's not at the moment, the, the iframe itself is secure um, and it processes donations. People can set up recurring monthly donations, which is a really great um, benefit of a giving event like Give828 is you can get some more recurring donors um, and it does pull right into your checkout flow. Um, so those donors will be immediately, I'm sorry, pulled into your donation report. So those donors will immediately be in your donation report and we pull in the settings from your checkout flow. Um, so if you have some custom donation levels there, you can, you'll can you see those reflected in your widget and you have a little bit of control over the color and the branding of your donation widget. So that's a really helpful tool if you get a lot of traffic to your website um, or you just want to set up a page where people can make a donation to your Give 828 campaign once donations begin, um, which happens, I believe, a, a week or so before the event itself. Um, okay, so that was kind of the boring dry part. I just wanted to go into some campaign strategy, um, just so that you're thinking about your campaign as you're getting acclimated to the Mighty Cause platform this year. Um, one of the biggest things that I uh, suggest doing is downloading and utilizing the nonprofit toolkit. Um, the Give8 28 team uh, has put together a really comprehensive um, nonprofit toolkit that um, is created by them for you. Um, and it has some instructions in there for getting started, how to fundraise. Um, they also have a social media guide and kit. They have images that you can use. Um, so definitely check that out. That is under um, resources on the give828.org website. Um, and you can utilize that. It's a really great resource. So if you're not quite sure where to start, this is really the best place to start. It'll give you, um, an, you know, an intro to the event and everything that you need to be thinking about as you go into this year's event. Um, we also have trainings. This is the first one and there's going to be some others. So take a look at the trainings on the website and get fully on board with Give828 so you know what you're doing and feel comfortable and secure. Um, and if you have a question, there are FAQs on the Give828 org website as well and that's a really great source of information like if you're wondering oh when does when does early giving begin you can find that in the faqs at any time um, one thing that is really important to do uh, is to secure early donations. So early giving is a period before the actual big day itself, um, where you have the opportunity to get people excited about your campaign, get them giving to your campaign, and build some momentum for the big day. Um, so that uh, starts, I'm not, it's on August 14th, I believe, um, and you can start collecting donations a little bit early and that would gives you a little bit of lead time so that you can get a good base of donations there if you have people in your nonprofits inner circle like your board of directors or your tried and true supporters your volunteers you can all you can get them all involved in your event um, and get them giving beforehand so that when you the the clock flips over on 828, you already have some donations in the bank. That is a really huge advantage, particularly on leaderboards. Um, donations are processed immediately, so these are not pledges that kick in 
on the event day itself, they are immediate donations that go to your nonprofit, um, which is just important to know that it's not a future donation, you're processing a live donation. Um, and donors do not to, need to create a user account in order to give, they can give anonymously, they don't need to leave their name. So uh, the donor data is really all yours, um, but donors don't need to create an account or do anything all, along those lines to give for Give 828. Um, ambassadors are really important. Uh, by ambassadors, we really mean a few different kinds of people. The first is peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, um, especially if you've participated in 20, uh, 2019 or 2020. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is a really fantastic way to boost your campaign. Um, and what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising does is it basically deputizes your biggest supporters to fundraise on your behalf. And the power in that is that you may not have the ability to contact somebody's best friend or their boss or their aunt to ask them for a donation, but they do. They have access to those people who may not be part of your nonprofit supporter base. Um, and most people, studies have shown, are more likely to give when they are asked by somebody that they know. So even though um, your supporters may not be professional fundraisers, the fact that they are talking to their, uh, their social network, their family, friends, and colleagues um, makes them actually a little bit better at getting getting people to donate if they don't have a prior relationship with your nonprofit. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is really simple on Mighty Cause. They just click a button on your page that says fundraise, and you can also create a fundraiser template for them that will pre-fill some of the parts of their page. But basically a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser will have their own uh, freestanding page that's connected to your nonprofit, um, and they'll talk about your organization and their connection to it, and they'll basically be asking the people that they know in their personal lives to make a donation to support them for the event um, and support your organization, and that's a really powerful way to get more people talking about your campaign and get more people giving because it helps you extend your reach to audiences you may not be otherwise able to speak to. Um, so that's a really great thing to think about at this stage of the event is how you're going to engage peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Um, and also your board of directors um, does have a responsibility to help with fundraising. So they are a great resource to tap for peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. I've seen giving events where they actually have large scale competitions between their board members to see who can raise the most money for the organization. So there's a really great, there's a lot of really great options for getting peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and ambassadors involved. Um, ambassadors can also just be people who share your campaign. Um, so that if your board members or volunteers aren't comfortable starting their own peer-to-peer -peer page, they can certainly share a link to your page and ask their social network to make a contribution. Um, so tapping people in your circle that can help you boost your campaign is a really great way to get the word out, get more people involved and interested in your campaign and to hit, hit your fundraising goals. Um, and really one of the things that's powerful about people speaking about your organization instead of your organization speaking on your own behalf is that you get this fantastic testimonial effect where people are listening to an individual talk about what your organization means to them, why they care about this cause. And it's a really powerful way to tell your story is through the people who support your work and are engaged in your work. Um, so this is a really great time to start thinking about who you might ask to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, how you might engage people at your organization who uh, are individuals that support your cause and are tried and true um, that are not part of your organization's fundraising typically. Um, so that's another powerful campaign strategy to start thinking about at this stage in the campaign. And then you'll just want to spread the word. You'll want to come up with a plan to, um, you know, talk about your campaign, what you're doing, uh, utilize all of the marketing channels that you typically use, like your email, social media, your website, if you do a newsletter or an e-newsletter. Um, one of the things that we recommend is segmenting your communications um, by donor group. So your big donors um, who give lots of money, you don't want to be talking to them in the same way as the people who give $5 sporadically. So doing a little bit of targeted outreach can be really helpful. If your organization is small, you can actually do more one-to-one -one outreach. This is a great time to start coming up with plans. Um, and as much, the, as much as you can do before the actual event to make a plan, to do some outreach, to get together everything you need and get it in place before the event, that will help you be successful on the big day itself. Um, and one of the things that I always like to remind people just because it can be easy to forget is make sure that you include a clear call to action. 
give now, please donate today, um, and make sure that you include a link, especially if you're um, on social media or um, communicating through email, make sure that they have a link so that they know where you would like them to go to make a donation. Um, and we are here to support you at Mighty Cause. So one of the benefits of using Mighty Cause is that when you use our platform, we are here to help you at your organization and all of your admins. We're here to help any peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, who need assistance. And we're also here to help your donors. So you basically have a full customer support staff who is here to help you, your fundraisers, and your donors, which is really fantastic. We do have a full support library. So if you're trying to figure something out on a Sunday and we are not in the office, you can always go to support.mightycause.com and read some uh, customer support articles that will walk you through how to do particular things on your organization page and answer some frequently asked questions. You can also email us at support at mightycause.com. Um, we usually respond within 24 business hours, so we're pretty quick to respond. During the day itself, we will be, um, you'll be our priority. Um, so you'll get very quick responses to any of your questions. And you can also give us a call. Um, we are on the East Coast um, and we're Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, our number is here, 202-800-1618. Um, emails typically get a little bit of a faster response, but you can also give us a call if that is your preference. All right, so that is it for me rambling about the platform. Um, I did want to make some time for questions. So it looks like we've got some stuff in the chat already. Um, let's see. There's quite a bit here, so I'm just sorting through it. Give me just a minute. Okay, this is, um, I'm just going to go down by down, down by down the list one by one and go through all the questions that we have. Um, so this is one from Robbie. If we had a Mighty Cause page and participated in Give 8 28 in 2020, will, be, will we be able to reactivate our old fundraising page for 2021's cycle? Yes, absolutely. If you are, uh, you know, an organization that has participated in the past, you don't need to create a new page. The organization page that you claimed when you registered registered for uh, the event through Mighty Cause in the past is an evergreen page. It doesn't expire. So your organization page is there for you anytime you'd like to use it um, during Give 828, leading up to Give 828 um, or not. Um, if you wanted to use it for another campaign, you're welcome to use it. So that page is there for you um, and you can use that page, edit it for what's happening at your nonprofit this year, but you don't need to create a new page. That one is already connected to your organization um, and you can just uh, uh, register, let us know who you are, and we will connect. We'll make sure that you register with your, your organization's page. It's connected to your, um, your tax ID. So that page doesn't move. It's there for you on Mighty Cause once you create it. Um, if you had a separate fundraising page, um, you may need to do some work to either recreate that or reactivate it. You may just need to change some things on the back end um, to reflect a new goal and new dates that you want to reflect. Um, but you can basically reuse everything. Um, so if you are a veteran and you've been here uh, for past Give 828, events, you don't need to create a new page at all. Um, let's see. Okay, there's a lot of really great messages um, from people. I'm glad to see that while I was babbling, people got down to uh, talking to each other. Just want to see if there's any other questions. Hang on just a minute. I may have to unshare to access that. Give me just a moment. Okay, I think that's kind of it for the um, questions that I saw. Um, I'll monitor the chat for just another minute and see if there's anything else um, that comes up. If you have any questions at all about the event, Oh, and there is one, sorry about that. Um, this one came through from Beverly. During registration, our organization has been told we must submit pictures and names of our staff. Currently, we have 17 staff members. Will we need pictures of each and every staff member? Um, that would be a really fantastic question for Nema to take, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So um, great question, Beverly. Yes, so in order for us to verify that you meet the criteria, we will need um, pictures of every staff member. So whatever instructions, uh, and this is this is specifically to you, Beverly, um, to your question, we will need pictures of every staff member. But if there are other organizations who've also received an email asking for um, more information, 
whatever the instructions are, that is exactly what we need. If it's more pictures of board, if it's pictures of board members or uh, names of um, board members or staff members, um, that is what we need to verify. And if you haven't registered yet, um, make sure that when we, because we verify by going to your website and looking at your staff and board members. So if you can make sure that that they, their pictures are already up or the names are already up and it's easy for us to make sure that they, this is indeed a black led black benefiting organization, that would be great and it will save us time. Yeah, that's all. Great, thank you. Yeah, and the registration process, I'm sure Nama can speak more to this if there's more to add, but it's really not designed to be um, cumbersome for you. It's really just trying to make sure that um, everybody who registers for the event is appropriate for the event um, because we do get some organizations who are not black led and black, black benefiting. So it's really just for that purpose, um, but hopefully everything else is um, you know, pretty cut and dry. Um, let's see. There's um, a question from Robbie um, that is a question that's specific to your registration. Um, let's see, I might be able to follow up with you offline about that. Um, but we can, you should be able to see through your organization's page if you have um, been accepted into the event or if your registration is pending. So when you go to your organization's profile and you go to the overview screen, which is the default page where you're taken um, when you access your organization's profile, um, on the top, if you've submitted your, your registration, you'll actually be able to see the status of your registration. So that's a really helpful tip if you haven't heard uh, from NEMA or the team about any information that they, they need to collect from you. Um, you can actually see the status of your organization on your overview page on Mighty Cause. Um, so if you see that it's pending, there might be something that they're waiting on from you. You can always reach out if you're not quite sure what that is. It could just be that it's a newer registration and they haven't gotten to um, gotten around to approving it yet. But if you have any questions about the status of your registration, you can feel free to just check in to your organization page and you should see that in the overview screen that you know, you've submitted your registration and it's currently pending or you're participating in the event. Event. So there is a, an, a, an update there. Um, if you're not, you're not sure where you are in the registration process, you can easily find that on your overview screen. Um, and let me just check the Q&A box. Okay, looks like it looks like that is it for questions. Um, if you have any Mighty Cause related questions, you can always reach out to us at support at mightycause.com. We're very quick to respond to you. Um, if you have any specific questions, you can also reach out to me. My name is Linda and um, that's L-I-N-D-A. And you can just reach out to me at Linda at mightycause.com. Um, and we'll make sure that you have access to the recording and slides for this uh, presentation on the um, Give 828 website. Um, so that will be as soon as I'm able to upload the recording to YouTube. And um, we'll make sure that the slides are accessible to you as well. Um, oh, and it looks like we actually just got a question through. Oh, okay. So this is an interesting question from Deborah. Um, I registered my personal nonprofit with my email address when I attempted to register my non my job nonprofit. It used my same email. How do I get my job email address on the registration? Um, so if you're or you're, you've already submitted your registration, um, you can. You basically, well, you can change it after the fact. So um, when you're making, when you're registering, you're trying to get access to your nonprofits page. So it would be really simple for us to just switch um, that over to your email address that you use for your or your um, your work uh, nonprofit, since you have two going on at the same time. Um, so it depends on where your your registration is in the process. Unfortunately, once it's submitted, you can't edit it, but we can make sure that you have access with the correct email address. Um, so that's a little bit of a complex question, um, not because it's particularly difficult, but it depends on where you are in the registration process. Um, and we can always change it for you after the fact. So even if it's approved with your personal email address, we can make sure that that's changed for you once you are um, part of the event. Unfortunately, we can't um, edit the event, edit the registration for you or allow you to edit the registration, but we can make sure that it's taken care of afterward. Um, let's see. Okay. And I just want to, looks like that's it for questions. So I just wanted to give Nema the chance for a final comment. She had something she wanted to share with you. 
Yes, thank you, Linda. So um, I just wanted to share with you that if you have submitted your registration form and, and you haven't heard from us, then it's likely that we're still verifying um, that you meet the criteria to be registered. Once we verify that, we do send you an email um, giving you a link to pay your registration fee. So you, if you go into your profile right now, if you if you don't if you're not registered yet, it might be you haven't paid your registration fee yet. So we encourage everyone who received that email saying you meet the criteria, please pay your registration fee. We encourage you to pay that fee so you can have access to all these uh, great things that Linda was talking about. Otherwise, you won't be officially on the platform. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that, but the registration fee is new this year, but it helps cover um, some of the costs of running the event for YBGB Institute. So if you are pending and you haven't heard anything, that's probably a good reason why um, your registration hasn't been approved yet. Um, and that that's a good thing to take care of. And then that can move you through the process. Um, all right, so I think that's it for questions. Um, and if you have any follow up questions, you can feel, feel free to reach out to one of us or contact support at mightycause.com. Um, you'll have access to the recording. I'll get that up on the site as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for all of your time today. Um, and we'll make sure you have the recording and make sure to sign up for the next training as well, especially if you really want to dive into campaign strategy, because that's what the next uh, Mighty Cause hosted webinar is all about. We're going to be di digging deep into campaign strategy. So if you're like, oh, where do I get started with planning this campaign? That is the webinar to catch. Um, so you can sign up for that on the Give 828 website as well. Um, so I will bid you all adieu. Thank you guys so much for all of your time today and happy fundraising. <laughs>